Okay. <laughs> so let, let's see where we go with this. I think this is really funny. Um, uh, a, a video response from someone giving a video response of someone. It's 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 fucking beautiful. <laughs> okay, so, so first of all, oh my gosh, so first of all, I want to let it be known that I have <laughs> uh, quite a bit of spirits within me, take that as you will, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, with, with that out of the way, and not definitely not in the way of anything, but with that out of the way, let's let's get to it. <laughs> so Yuvraj is talking about, uh, you know, third density level uh, consumption and whatnot, and how that slows us down, and he is not wrong there, but, <sighs> like I say time and time again, there are many layers and levels to, uh, what we call reality or life. There are many subtleties and nuances. So when we think that we are beginning to understand or understand things, it, it's very, uh, it, it would be a wise thing to realize that there are layers within what you are realizing. There are more depths and dimensions there. <clears throat> I'm not for sure if Yuvraj said this, but the genie definitely did many times, which was that food was poison. I'm pretty sure Yuvraj said it as well. And anytime I hear the word poison, it really disgusts me. Uh, well, first of all, almost everything in this specific kind of world that we live in, as, as in a, a westernized, more like, oh, we're, we're very much civilized and educated. Like, that's very much disgusts me. Very much... Uh, Gets me fired up. More than anything, because of the uh, lexicon, because of the misunderstandings of what reality is, that so much of our words that we have been given are complete. This idiocracies of of what truth is, of what the reality of the situation is, which is that life just is, like things just are. Like whenever you decide to choose a side, whenever you try, whenever you decide or are, are led into believing that you need to choose this or that or things are this way or they're that way then you then you are the one splitting your own your own reality into into an illusion a conceptualization of
a falsehood and that things are either this or the that but that's not ever the case things are always this and that there is absolutely no such thing as the word poison like I've said before there's a lot there's a lot of words that just are completely are not accurate in their meaning, in their creation, in their etymology. They're fallacies. They're etymological fallacies. <coughs> Such as the word hallucination, hallucination, poison. These are not by any means accurate uh, constructs of what is actually occurring. What people are attempting to do, what they have been led into doing, in, into using certain linguistics and words to describe effects, but inaccurately describing them. Whenever we think of poison, we are thinking of an acute reaction to something. Which happens with anything and everything in life. Too much water will have an acute reaction and a negative effect. The same with anything and everything. That doesn't mean it's a poison. That means that you've done too much of something. That's it. That's all it is. Death is another one of these words. There is no such thing as that word. There is only transmutation. There is only a shifting of energies, of form. There is never a death. And whenever you think of like a human body dying, of like a memory dying, uh, you could say a soul, but like that that is eternal. Like... So when, whenever you are, are looking upon this crazy, fucked up world and the death that they want you to believe in, the only thing that's dying, well, nothing is dying, first of all. It's, it is transmuting. It's transforming. Where they, where they catch you in the fucking magic trick, in the hat trick, is in the forgetfulness. So let's drink some Orin. This is after I've had many spirits in me. And this Orin tastes... <sighs> Hard to describe this, really. Um... Yeah. I mean, you have to you have to just start, you know, somewhere. Obviously, you have to start somewhere. But starting to really figure things out for yourself, to dive into ex the experience for yourself, to redefine things for yourself, to start to engage deeply within and without, to start to ingest the orange you will quickly come to a place where it becomes the most amazing thing that you've ever ingested ever and right now like even after i've drank many spirits this is absolutely amazing to taste 
the texture it's very light it's not like a heavy liquid as in you you can tell whenever you're ingesting a heavy liquid or say like you know heavy water there's many uh whatever they call it you know whatever the fuck the scientism wants to convince you of uh, parts per million whatever you'll feel the density in whatever you ingest or even feel or even swim within uh air water ether whatever it is you'll you'll sense the density the density of this liquid it's very light it's very fluid as in it just it flows right through you don't i don't sense any obstructions the taste is sweet and the effects immediately as as soon as i start to ingest it clarity Which is beautiful because with all of the spirits that I have, I have ingested, which has been in the form of uh, fermented beverages, I was wanting a more clearer, stronger spirit to balance out, to clear away um, all of the bacterium that accumulates in drinking such beverages but i i'm very satisfied and very thankful that i am ingesting this liquid right now because it, it is having the exact same effect that i was seeking which is clarity And it definitely tastes a hell of a lot better than a strong, strong spirit. <sighs> so, I'm making this video because I want to clarify that yes taking in substances you could say of a third density or of a denser realm um depending upon what you look into it could be called a grosser realm which i have always found a very interesting word to use when speaking of heavier things but as with everything we are to utilize it in a manner that is balanced if if we seek balance within and without Anything and everything we come upon, we utilize, we engage with, we, we alchemize it, we transform it into a state of balance. No matter what the polarity, the natural state of the human form is to seek balance. And so... As I've been watching some of Yuvraj's most recent videos, I, I'm constantly being reminded of Zen Atman and what he is constantly reminding us, which is if you have no quarrels, qualms with with anything, then then it's all good. And yes, that's going to take, you know, a certain level of integration and processing to be able to get to that point. 
where you can ingest anything and not have any problems with it because you know how to navigate it. You know your way around it. And this is just going to take time, patience, and practice and engagement. to be able to do this, to become the shaman or the alchemist. It takes experience. So when, whenever we are talking about ingesting things, What is sub sustenance? What is nutrition? Truly, there are many of us out here who don't need to eat, and, and we experience a tremendous boost in clarity, in energy, in awareness, and cognizant abilities. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't a purpose for plants, for specific herbs, or concoctions, or cocktails, or medicines. The point is finding, is an understanding, overstanding, and understanding through that. You, you only understand through direct experience, first and foremost. This is why I love the word gnosis. Experience for yourself. Figure things out for yourself. And that's why... I only seek to remind people of what they truly already know within themselves. But because of the shit fucking storm that we find ourselves within, the indoctrination system, the people have been led to believe in something that just is uh, pretty fucked up. So I offer reminders to what you already know within you. It's all already there. All you have to do is listen to it and engage that. Empty your cup first before you begin to fill it again. This is why fasting is so beneficial. It's, it's so it, it's such an amazing experience to be able to clean yourself, to be able to empty your cup, and then real and then see things with, with a clear lens. To be able to really start to see what effects things have on you and not just you but when I say you I mean all of you as in all of us you start to become sen more sensitive to the subtleties all around and within So, whenever I fast nowadays, I 
I do so, but I also, I do not, limit myself or take away from whenever I'm out in nature or whenever I see a certain type of herb growing around my vicinity or just around wherever I'm walking. Especially if it's calling out to me. If it seems to be that it is in a perfect position that the light of the sun is shining on it just right, that it seems to be waving at me, like, hey, I'm here. Then, yes, I, I, I will absolutely ingest that herb, you know, even if I'm on a fast. There are many levels to fasting. There are many different types of fasting, just because... Maybe you have been led to believe that fasting is a certain thing. It's, it's not necessarily the case. We can fast from many things. But whenever we find ourselves in a more clearer state and we are feeling the call of nature... the curiosity and the aliveness of everything around us, then yes, taste of the natural world while you are doing this fasting. Because that is going to have a huge benefit onto all of your bodies, not just the physical, all of your subtle bodies have a huge effect and benefit. Some of the herbs lately that I have been ingesting while I've been fasting is certain flowers, lots of dandelions, lots of dandelion leaves, uh, violets, violet flowers, violet leaves, the greens, plantain leaves, uh, certain docks, as in yellow dock, uh, I haven't found burdock just out in the wild, it's a little bit more rare to find in the wild, but yellow dock is, is a very common one, you will find yellow dock just about everywhere. And that's it. That, is, that is a very bitter one, but it's also a very beneficial one for your liver, for cleansing out the body. So this is why it's very, also very important whenever you're fasting to... It just depends, you know, whatever kind of a fast... Fasting is very much about mentality as well. If you're just first starting out with fasting and you want to be strict, that's that's fine. Be strict with yourself. Just do a water fast. Just cut out as much as you can if that's where your mentality is. If you've been fasting for a long while, like what I have been doing, then you can implement certain herbs into your fast that are cleansing herbs, such as the dandelion. The, the burdock, the yellow dock, even wormwood. You'll find that in your walks out in nature, you will be drawn towards certain herbs that are beneficial. That is that what... <laughs> And is what you need, what your physical body needs at that moment in time. And eventually, you know, you'll get to the point where you'll happen upon what not just what your physical body needs, but what your all, all your levels and subtle bodies need. 
and you'll just relish in that, you know, experience and the taste and the flavor and the smell and the senses. And you'll allow that to re enliven all of your subtle nuances of what the totality of what you are. And also, in so doing, you'll start to become, you, you'll create the connection of, oh, wow, like nature is actually, it actually does provide, it actually does, you know, want to nourish and want to help. So you'll start to engage that connection of, oh, wow. walking around especially if you walk around barefoot then you are able to really connect in how that bioacoustic and bio resonance happen so that if you consistently walk barefoot along a path eventually over time things will start to grow up grow there in accordance to what you really need what your physical body needs and then you know what also what your subtle body needs eventually healing the body and then nourishing the soul and then you're able to just <laughs> stop and smell the roses smell the flowers and within that essence in the ethers that's all the nourishment that your body needs And this is essentially what we're getting at here whenever we're talking about breatharianism. We're talking about utilizing the ethers and the essences of the flowers and of the pollens and of the purity of the air and the waters within the air. And that is definitely all we need to nourish ourselves. But we cannot be breatharianism or breatharians within living in a dirty environment and cities are the dirtiest of environments that you will find yourselves in. The, the particles within the air of all the vehicles, of all the subtle particles being spread throughout And clogging up your system, clogging up your pores, clogging up your lungs. You cannot be a breatharian or an or whatever you want to term it as a natural human being whenever you are living within these systems. Because your body is constantly going to need to cleanse itself. And so, yes, taking in denser material is going to slow your body down. It's going to utilize your essence, your spirit in digestion. But if you're utilizing cleansing herbs for that, that's also going to benefit you. But your body is still utilizing its spirit it's it's soul essence to break this stuff down in order to clean clean you so just what it comes down to is your environment that's what it always comes down to your environment what is the quality of the water you are drinking of the air you are breathing of the herbs you are ingesting what is the quality over the quantity? Just take steps, little by little, take steps into 
realization and to clarity of all the little things that accumulate over time and eventually become blockages and then eventually become diseases or what you will be led to believe are disorders or cancer or whatever the fuck. It's just blockages blocking up your internal filters, your internal systems, the organs that are there to process the multitude of energies that we are meant to engage with and process and live, live with. We're, we're, we're supposed to we're not supposed to use these organs and, and these bodily processes as we have been led to believe for digestion, for consumption. It's, it's meant for utilization of essences being able to utilize the essences of, of nature in a lighter and lighter fashion but you know this is all a process we are uh, we find ourselves in this time period in, in a state of uh, immense degradation, of mass confusion and mass manipulation. So it's going to take uh, different stages, different steps, different things and methods and modalities for different people to snap them back into an awareness of, oh my god. It's, it's not what I've been led to believe. So yes, continue to clear away and empty your cup in order to fill it with actual substance and sustenance and quality of such. So that you can begin to see with a clearer perception. As within, so without. So whenever you clear within, your perception of the so-called outer world is going to become... You're going to be able to make more sense of it. It's going to be able to... You are going to be able to... See it for what it is, and not for what you've been led to believe it is. Figure shit out for yourself, people. I have faith that each and every one of you can do so. Can you? You are you are designed, or whatever you want to term it as, you are built to figure shit out for yourself so just do it get out of your own way let go of the bullshit linguistics and the syntax and the images and the belief structures that you've been led to believe is your reality 
dissolve those things and distill the essence, feel the spirits and realize what is what for you. Get true. Feel it and be it and know it. Peace.